I'm Erin Fay. Uh, I'm an artist and also an aspiring Japanese linguistics scholar. I've been making books and zines and prints for over 20 years and been um, involved in a lot of different projects. Uh, I want to quickly show you guys some of the projects and different work that I've done and show you some book structures before we dive in. And yeah, I'm really excited to make books with you all. So I'm going to share the screen just to show you some of some of the work that I've done has been around sort of democratizing practice, giving people access to tools and processes that they might not otherwise have. So I'm going to, this is my first time teaching on Zoom, so I hope you'll patient with me. So share, oh wait, goodness. Why is it so small? Sorry. <laughs> so I just wanna take you through just a couple of projects that I've been involved in over the years. So one project I did in New York was I wanted to make letterpress printing more accessible for people and um, take letterpress onto the streets because so many times people have to self-select to learn about printing processes. So what I did was create something called the press cycle and I put a letterpress machine on the back of a vintage tricycle and wheeled it around New York and taught people to print. So that's a project. Um, Last year, in collaboration with Auckland Museum and the Smithsonian, I did a project as part of their culture lab. Um, and the theme of this culture lab was getting a bunch of different artists involved in Pacifica to be thinking about um, Asian Pacifica, to think about civility. And so I wanted to think about the ways in which we tell stories using maps and inheritance. So I created this uh, work of psychogeography that overlapped, um, overlapped the memory maps of some of the participating artists with, with the map of the area we were activating. And then people could use an audio guide to traverse people's memory while also traversing a different place. Come on. Is that okay, well, we'll go here. Um, for several years, I ran a gallery and art space all about printing in words. And um, again, all about democratizing practice, all about giving people access to letterpress, to book binding, to letter writing, to zines, and really letting people know that they can make their own work and helping people to do that. Um, and the last project on here I wanna show you, if it'll let me, will it let me? Yep, okay, great, now is, all right, well, we'll just have it within my, in my screen view, is that um, in Aotearoa, New Zealand, it's hard to get your hands on zines. So there's a once a year zine fest, and that's about it. So I created the zine map, which is a zine vending machine, so that people could have access to um, getting zines all year round, but also to sharing their work. Um, and so, and I just want to show a couple of sort of in transitioning to this talk, um, a few different things that I've made and I've been involved in zines for over 20 years. Um, probably my favorite zine I've ever made is this 100 page zine on Taylor Swift. Um, there's no irony in it whatsoever. Um, and this, you know, I think that when we think about bookbinding, we're often thinking about you know, just a perfect bound book from a shop. But there are so many different ways and so many different formats for book binding and ways to bind a book. I believe that stapling is also a very valid form of binding, but we won't be going over that today. This, um, this comic and draw these drawings of witches, this binding was just a sewing machine. So sort of blue on the outside and then pink on the middle. So you can also just use, um, do sort of a single signature binding with a sewing machine. And that's perfectly valid as well. There's, and now I want to talk a little bit about one of the, um, the first technique that we're going to learn and it is pamphlet stitch. So pamphlet stitch is, here's, let me pull out um, is, so just to go back, sorry, once is so a folio like this 
is a, one is a signature. So um, sometimes if you get like a hard book cover book that's really nice, you'll be able to see in it all the sort of different little sections. And each of those sections is called a signature. And each uh, hole where thread or whatever binding material passes through is called um, a station. So I'm going to use that vocabulary today of station and signature. So a, pamphlet's, uh, a pamphlet is a single signature book. It's probably one of the most simple ways of binding. It has three signatures and a single thread running throughout. Um, and before I teach it, I'm going to introduce you to some tools and also show you some of the creative ways that this can be used. So, um, for home book binding, uh, it depends what you have around. You, my favorite tool probably for book binding and doing things with paper is a bone folder. It looks like this. It's great for scoring so you can create lines that make, make things easier to fold and also run, run your bone folder over paper. Paper all has a grain. So if you've ever, when you try and fold pieces of paper, you'll find that it folds more easily one way than in the other way. And so sometimes if you want to work against the grain, a bone folder is really helpful. However, at home, what you can just use is a knife. Um, often you'll have just a sort of rounded or somewhat rounded edge of the back of a butter knife. That's a real good solution. Um, I've got an awl. And that's just great for making holes and everything. However, what can work really well, you can use a really sharp pencil. You can use an ice pick. But also, if you have a big safety pin, undoing that, you're going to get something that's similar to this. I have beeswax and linen thread, but basically what beeswax and linen thread is, is dental floss. We use, um, we, we wax our thread to give it some more structure. So this I've already waxed a little, so you can see, I'm gonna put this down here, this, this sort of has a little more resistance than this. And why we want that is to give our books more structure and to um, help to keep the binding together and make it last longer. Um, and then, so actually what I'll do is, we'll, so we'll start by making this first book. Um, I can't see anyone, which is fine, but does everyone know how to use reactions? And um, if you're on the bottom of your Zoom screen, you can give a thumb, yep. A thumbs up. So I guess being I can't see anyone, if you have some paper and thread, um, can you just give me what reaction? Can you give me a clap? <laughs> Yay. Great. Okay, so um, we're gonna start with this, which involves you'll just need you'll need some paper. I recommend at this stage cutting your, because we're starting with a three hole version of this pamphlet. So I recommend cutting your paper in half long ways. So if you have some, what is it called in America? Letter paper? <laughs> um, <laughs> just, you can, can just fold it in half and take your scissors and cut right along. And so I'm going to give you a moment to do that. And just remember while you're working, if you have any questions, you can always just unmute and call them out. Sometimes it's hard to you know, type it in the chat if you are using your hands. How many pieces of paper do you recommend we use? Um, well, I think I'm thinking of this as more of like a sample. So one thing to remember with a book and with pamphlet and anything that is a sort of a folio is that one piece of paper equals four pages in your book. So for example, if you want a 16 page book plus cover, you want four sheets of paper plus your plus a cover sheet. And so and for a cover, 
you can just use another piece of letter or I'm going to use a little bit of a thicker card. And so, you know, you, I think for, what did I do here? Yeah, if you just use five sheets of paper or get yourself five pieces, then that's a really good little notebook. So we'll start with that. And when you guys are ready for the next step, just give me a reaction. Great, I'm just going to cut this on a paper cutter to save us all some time. All right. So I'm going to show you how to fold the paper using a knife um, to make it easy. I'm going to tilt my computer down so you can see here. So, um, and I'm also going to show you with, with the bone folder. So I'm just gonna take the bone folder first to show you what that's like. Um, a good tip for lining up your paper is you want to just look at your bottom two corners and if you can line up your bottom two corners and then you scroll around it you will get a near perfectly folded piece of paper we're all human so nothing's going to be perfect um, but to do that with a knife so i have a few sheets here let's i'll do um four sheets here so then I'm lining up my bottom corners and I'm holding it together. And so I take the, just the back of my knife and I just roll it around. And again, I'm gonna do that a couple more times so you can see it. And then that gives me my signature. I'm going to do this again with my piece of card. Again, you can just use your paper or card, both are okay. And then whatever's going to be your cover, you're going to just put inside. How's everyone doing? Yay, I love the thumb react. <laughs> Yeah, thumbs up from Hillary. <laughs> Great. Um, I'm just going to, while the rest of you are continuing to work, I'm just going to give a moment to talk about, there are like official book binding clips that you can get that I am never going to buy. I find um, little binder clips or clothespins to be perfectly acceptable. So, or being that this is a smaller book, you can just use your fingers, but this makes it really easy. Once you have your cover and your signature inside, um, just put a, a pin on or a clip on to hold it all together. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to create three stations. I'm going to show you on a, I made a color-coded version so you can see what I'm talking about. So we're going to make um, it's about, it's approximately three, three eighths of an inch from the bottom. Um, hi, Amanda. Yeah, the cover can just be a piece of paper or it can be a card. And you can do whatever you want with it. If you happen to have some colored card or um, something else to cover it in, you can. But for this exercise, it's just learning the skills and a piece of paper is fine. So here we have three holes and I'm going to show you how to make them, but that's what we're going to be aiming for. And it's about three eighths of an inch from the top and the bottom and then a hole in the middle. And so, you know, you can just take about like your finger or your thumb and put, put a little um, notch there or a mark there and your other th thumb at the bottom. And we don't want it too close to the ends because then your paper can tear when you're um, sealing your binding. So that's why we want it a little bit in from the top and the bottom. And then we also want a hole in the middle. And so now I'm gonna take a step back and show you how to do that. 
Um, so this is where your awl or your safety pin or your pencil, whatever sharp objects you have, or even if, if you just have a needle, you can do that. You'll just have to um, be a little more persistent with it and make sure if you are using a needle, because multiple sheets of paper can bend your needle, to just hold it really close to the tip so that then you get where you need to be. I like to either, there's two options for doing this, is if you have something kind of like some foam board that something you ordered came in, you can use that. Or um, you can hold this over the end of your table. And then I'm just going to estimate. I'm first gonna go, where's my middle? And I'm gonna put a hole right in the middle there. And so pull that out. And so then you have, you have your first hole. Then I'm going to go up to the top, measure about with a thumb. Everyone has a thumb, I hope. If not, another finger will work. And you're going to just, and what I like about doing it over here is you can close it and that gets it, um, that gets your holes more on the spine so that you get a really clean binding. So and then I'm just gonna put a hole through there. I'm gonna measure again. and put a hole there. So what you're gonna end up with, I'll show you on the inside, are three holes, just like this guy. How's everyone doing? Awesome. Cool. So, so, it's hard to know. One of the things that um, beginner bookbinders often find frustrating is not knowing how much thread to use. So a good method, you always want to have more than less because running out halfway through, um, it's less of an issue when you only have three holes, but when you get into multiple signatures and more complicated bindings, it's a bit of a problem. So a really good rule of thumb is to do 2.5 um, length. Two, uh, have a thread that's 2.5 times the length of your book. This doesn't require math. You just go like this. One, so you have your string in your spine. One, two, and then I'll just cut that there. And then this is the part where if you're using dental floss, you've already got it. If you don't have beeswax, that's fine. But here's the part where I'm just going to run it over if you had a candle, you can run it through a candle and you just take your thread and you pull it through a few times just to give your thread some structure. And you don't have to, like if you had yarn and a hole punch and paper and that's it, then you can still make a book. It's, it's all possible, that's, that's the point. So now you can see this has a bit of a bit of structure. Hey, hey, Cassia, do you want to ask a question? Or oh, sorry, I saw, thought I saw someone unmuting. Um, and then you know something that I am never going to be good at, which is threading a needle. So we can all join in that together. <laughs> but you just any needle will do. Just and you just want to, you don't want to pull it like, like you're doing sewing. You just want to pull it through and have a little bit of a tail at the top. And so there's two options. You can either decide that you want your strings inside or on the outside. I like the look of them on the outside. So what we'll do, is everyone ready? Can I have some reactions? Cool. All right. Um, so you're gonna take your needle, you're going to go in through, and you still have your binder clip. You're going to go in through the middle signature or the middle station and you're going to pull that through 
leaving a tail at the end. So we have that in the middle and on the outside. Then we're going to go through, take that and go through this bottom station or top, depending on how you're thinking about your book. But it's just, that's just logistics. That's just linguistics actually. So you just pull that through. And so you're going to have a line right there that goes halfway up your book. We still good? All right. So then you're going to take your, you're going to skip this middle signature and you're going to go on the outside all the way to the top. And pull that through. So now you'll have a line of thread that goes all the way across. You have your single tail at the back and inside it looks like there's still this line and this one's coming here. This, this, your thread with your needle is coming through here. And so then, um, is everyone ready for the next step? Reacts? Cool. Um, so then here's where this, we're going to go through again, this middle, and you can hold this to the side, this back string, just hold it a little to the side with your finger as you pull this through. It's a gentle thing. And you're just going to go back through that middle. Signature. So now you have line all the way across on the inside and you have a line lines all the way across on the outside and you have these two you have your little tail and you have your longer tail and so then you want to make sure you know if you pull too tight in here your paper in here can rip a little bit so you just you want to give it a nice just steady little pull to tighten it up but not so much that you tear your paper. And that just takes a little bit of learning and experimentation to get right. So what I like to do is now I'm going to cut my string with the needle to be the same size as my tail. So now I have these two little tails and I have this big string going across. So what I'm gonna do is have the one side of the one tail on one side of that string and one tail on the other side. Can you all see that? So there's the, this, this bit is in the middle and then we have these two. And then all you do is tie it in a knot. And there you go, it's your first book. So I wanna just show you a few things that, this is a really simple book, but it has a lot of potential to do different things with it. Um, and so I wanna just show you some different samples and ways that people have used this creatively. Um, there's the Center for Book Arts in New York did a book arts exhibition on embroidery and thread and really incorporating more textiles into, into book art forms. And they used a pamphlet stitch to make their catalog. So all this is, is just the, the binding you just learned. I'll show you in the inside. It's exactly, exactly the same one you just learned. But how they made it fancy was that they used some book cloth and some book board. So you can just experiment with doing different 
different ways. Like once you have this technique, it's all about just reimagining different things you can do. And book cloth, you can get at Tala's, which is in Williamsburg and does mail order. And it just looks like this. And this is um, book board. And you know, you can buy this. However, a lot of things you order online come with cardboard that's about this thick. And I just save it and cut it up and keep it for books. And it's really easy and cheap. So there's no real reason to buy it. Um, and just, and then you can use, if you wanted to make something that has more of a book feel, like if you wanted to do something like this, but you wanted it to have more sort of a cover feeling, you can just use PVC glue, which is really just Elmer's glue. Get a big brush, brush it on, and apply your book board. And then you fold it over the sides like that. So you get this really, a real book feel to it. And then all you do to get end papers is to cut a rectangle. Sorry, I'm moving really fast, but I want to make sure we get to the other structures. Um, it's just get a rectangle of some beautiful paper, whatever you want, and paste it on top. And this is where having this tool really comes in handy because it, then you can spread things out really easily. But you can also do that with a knife. Um, and some other things, cool things you can do with even just that structure is, for example, you, want, you can always think with books and with design about about your audience and about what you want to convey. And the book isn't a rigid object. You have so much possibility for opening it up and seeing different ways of engaging with it. So for example, this zine has, is just, again, that pamphlet stitch, single signature, but in the middle, um, instead of there being just the same size piece of paper, there's a centerfold. And then that goes, that signature, that sewing goes right here, but you have a fold out. So there's just different ways to think about incorporating. Um, but one disadvantage of this, of a three signature is that you can't put in as many different small pieces. So I wanted to show you um, two other variations on it quickly, because I also wanna show you stab binding. Um, and so I want to first give you an example. This is a book that has sort of two, it's kind of a two signature book, um, but had different sizes. So you wanted to have like a larger size and a smaller size um, book and then have them all together with an external cover. And so you, in imagining how you want to convey your information, you need to be thinking about what the best way of sewing and structure is. And a nice, easy way to do this is to create, um, instead of three holes, we're just gonna do quickly a five hole. And what's nice about five holes is you're not limited by having, um, having whatever it is take up this entire section. So with, with five holes, you have more sewing sections. So there's more places that paper can go. There's more places that extras can go. I made this sample last night. I just wanted to stick in a different size piece of paper um, to give some different information, to give a different textual ex experience. And that can go anywhere in your signature. Um, something I sometimes like to do is put in an envelope so you can have like a little pocket inside the middle of your book or just sticking out. So that there are different ways of discovery. There's different ways to sort of slow someone down going through your book. Um, so, and the other thing with this size versus this size or three versus five is that this isn't as strong. So this works better for smaller books, whereas the five holes allows you to have a larger format. So we're going to make, again, um, we're going to make just, you can just take your eight and a half by 11 paper and for the sake of this exercise, just fold it long ways. Like make like hot dog 
hot dog link? Is that the what you learn in kindergarten? To make up, make some hot dogs for, out of your paper. And when you're ready with that, let me know, and I'll move on to the next step. And I'll have some water. So great. So we're going to do the same thing where we have our binder clip. I have just folded it in half this way, so and made a very skinny book. Um, but for the sake of demonstrating it, I'm going to put in this tag, which is going to overhang it. But that's okay. It can just be an L book. Um, or wait, where's my little? I'll put in. I'll put in the envelope. So whatever pieces you want, if you want just like a strip, you can use it. Whatever you want to put in, you can. Um, and I'm going to put this in the middle so that you guys see it. Sorry, I know you can't look down right now, but I'll show you in a moment. And then you're going to put your clip. The same thing applies with um, your thumbs or your two fingers. And so you're gonna make sort of two fingers in, a ho one hole here and one hole here with your all. So let's do, let's do that now. Let me know when you guys are ready and we can move on to the next step. Great. All right. So what you'll do, so you have your, your bottom holes. Now you're going to make a hole in the center the same way as you did with the previous, with the previous um, book. Just bring that all the way through. And then you're just going to evenly space between, if you, um, if you were additioning this or making like something making multiples or wanting to be really exact, you'd measure it. But this is just about learning. So we're eyeballing it. So you're going halfway between your center and your bottom hole, and you're gonna put a hole there. And then you'll do it at the top as well. So now we have five holes it might be easier to see on this side so one so one in the middle the two at the bottom and one in between here and one in between here or i should for closed captioning wait no i guess it's not dictation for the blind um and so the same as the last the same as the last one you want to have your string to be two and a half times the length of your book it's fine so one, two, two and a half. And then the never ending, trying to thread the needle. <laughs> Okay. 
And when you're ready for the next step, let me know. All right. Anyone else? All right. Well, given the time, we might just keep going and then this will be recorded. And if you want to go back and rewatch, if there's anything you miss. And also, you can always message me. Um, so we're going with this one, we're going to go on the inside for something different. So we're going through the middle hole, just like we did on the first book. So I'm going to put this down so you can really see. I'm going to unclutter this to make it easy for you to see. So we're going through this middle hole. Wait, what? Hmm. I'm just going to pull it the same way we did with the last, leaving a tail. Now we're going to go down to the second, the closest um, station, which is the second. So if we think one, two, three, four, five, this is three, the middle one is three. We're going down to two. We've gone out three, and now we're going into two. And we're just gonna pull that in. So you end up with, So then you're going to go out the bottom station, your station number one. And this is going to pull a, a bit. So you can see that that gets a little tighter. So now we have one line on the outside, a short line between stations three and two, and on the inside between two and one. Now we're going to go back we're on the outside. And we're going to go back into station number two. So we've gone out from station two to one and we're going to go back into it. From one to two. So just to review, we've gone out this, we've gone from the middle out the outside, the, out of station number three, down into station number two, pulled it into the inside and gone um, to the inside, in through station number one, out station number one. And then we're looping back around to station number two and coming out two. So you'll have a, a, a line that mirrors the outside and the inside. So then we're going to skip the center station. We're going to just leave it as is. And we're going to come up to station number four on the inside. And we're going to pull down through there. So now we still have our string. We have a longer, a longer line here. Um, and then we are now out station number four on the back. And there's nothing here yet. There are no lines of string on either side of station number four. Now, We're going to go into station number five, your, your top one. I'm going to pull that through. So again, so now you have lines here, you have a skip and another line. And on the inside, you have one long line and a, um, your thread coming out your top station. And then what happens is you're going to go back through station four. So the one you're going to connect this line up. Coming back out. 
So now on the inside, you have one long line. And then we're going to go back in through our station three where our little tail lives. That wasn't very elegant, but. So now you have your tail and your thread in the same place. You have your long line on the back. You have your long line in the middle. And you just take your two, you just get, make sure that everything is um, taut, but not achingly tight. And then you tie, just tie your, your knot in the middle. And so then you have a much more sturdy book that you can, you, you can put inserts in like a, so here now this, this has a little envelope in the middle of it, a little pocket. Um, and you can do a lot of different experiments and things with this. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think this is the only example I have on the table. Um, so I want to, we have 15 minutes left and I want to gauge people's, what people would like. Would you like me to take you through a few more variations of pamphlet stitch? Would you like me to show you stab binding, which is a different way? If some people could chime in to say what would be the thing they most want, that would be great. Um, how, how do you attach multiple signatures together? Okay, um, so I can show you two versions of how to do that. So, um, there are a few different ways, um, and I'll, I'll show you a few samples, and then you can tell me which of, the, which of them you would want to learn in more detail how to do. Does that seem like a good plan? Um, so, something I really like is something called the Dosi Do book, which allows you to have, to read a book one way and then turn it upside down and read it in a different way. So this is actually a two signature. I'm gonna put this down so you can see it better. So a two signature book with a long cover. And so that means you can put like, if you wanted to do text on one and then images on the other, and then you're asking also for different orientation and there's different possibilities for covers. So that's one way. Another thing is this isn't, this is one that's particularly good, I think for portfolios, and that is the st stab binding. And it is, instead of being signatures, you're just working with flat pieces of paper And so then, and you can do a lot of paper in there and it, without it being, starting to become like, and this is, has a real classic, um, where are they? And this is a sort of a classic Japanese style and there's a lot of variations you can learn on the internet to make these very fancy, like these edgings, edgings very fancy. Um, another way to do multiple signatures is you start with something, this can either be, you start with a W, a W piece of paper, and then you can do two signatures and have it like this. And this way, this book lies open, but you have two separate signatures in here. And the way you do this is you just start the same way you do with any of, with any of the other books, you, but you do it with adding, um, adding your cover. So some people extend this all the way out. I like having the little flaps like this, but you can also do it with a few pieces like this and just put them 
where your signature is going to be. And in another way, sorry, I have a lot of examples for, <laughs> for the answer to this question. Um, and I might, I think that will be what I show you. And I also want to talk about for a moment just how great desk, desk jackets can be because you can just do a lot with adding an extra little piece of paper to the outside. Um, for example, this, this book has just someone who's made this, this jacket on the outside, but then it's just two folios two, with creative ways of having paper inside. And so that's a really nice way to show off your work and be like, oh, there's going to be sort of this paper section and this tour section, but then it all comes together by creating a little folio for it. Um, and that keeps the design interesting without it feeling like it's overcomplicated and it is still something you can achieve at home. And the other, so this book, I also made a little desk jacket for And this is the two signature, the simple two signature pamphlet. And I can show you this one. I think this is probably the one to show you. And why this is really cool when you're doing two signatures with this is it, then it's reversible. So just, so you can, and it lies flat. And this is a four, so if you get out another sheet of paper and we'll have four, um, four, uh, four stations for this book. And when you get into doing multiple signatures, something that, you know, when you're just working with a small book like this, you can just do, create all of your holes at the same time by just, and then taking the papers out. But if you're working with um, multiple signatures, multiple volumes, a thing to do is to make a template like this. And then this, you just put this at the bottom and always know where to put your holes for every single one. So I would be like, know to put this here and then line it up to the edge of my paper. And I would make my holes according to where I've made these lines on this paper. Does that make sense? Thumbs up if it makes sense. <laughs> or if not, ask more questions. Um, so I think we have eight minutes. We can learn this, we can learn this structure too. Um, and oh, I wanna say, if you are interested in the do, -si -do book, what it is is it's just, the way you make this is you measure out, um, you just get a longer sheet of paper that's about the same size or the same height as your books. And then you fold it one way and then the other to be sort of the same width. Or, I mean, you can experiment, you can decide how you want that to look, but it is essentially making a Z. I almost said Z because I've been in New Zealand for a really long time, but you essentially make a Z shape or an N and then you sew, just like you did the regular, uh, the regular um, pamphlet, you sew one into here and you sew one into here. And you can decide, like here I decided to do, oh, I wanted red thread here, I wanted a white thread here. You can use um, your thread choices and your paper choices to really communicate what you want to with your design. Um, and just before I teach you this last one, I wanted to, on that topic, show you this book which um, it's a machine sewn, but it's more, it's like a Coptic binding. It is still an exposed spine. Ah, I see I have a question. Um, oh, thanks, Hillary. Um, but what they did was they really thought about like what the form of this book is and how that's going to match the contents. So there's a lot of red and black in it. They went with the red thread and that carries all throughout. So it's those kinds of decisions and that kind of thinking you can really be working with when approaching book binding. Like it doesn't just have to be the, the communication method, but it can be part of the design and part of the art and part of the way in which you tell your story. Um, okay, so now we're going to make, again, fold, um, let's say fold, fold eight pieces of paper in half and then we'll make, the last book. And again, because this is just, these are samples, you can just cheat 
take it all together. And then take, take my knife. And then you have All right, let me know when you guys have your paper. Cool. Great, all right, so for this one, um, start by doing your top and bottom holes. And again, this is, we're, we're, we're doing this the fast and dirty way, but I would recommend a template normally for this process. So just put your hole at the top and your hole at the bottom. Now this one, we're just doing four holes, so we don't want it to be a hole in the center. So we're just gonna approximate uh, about a quarter down um, from your top hole and put that and make that hole. And you, the reason to do multi-signature in a pamphlet is because maybe you just have too much, you want it to, I mean, there's the design implications as well um, and how you want to tell your story, but sometimes it'll just be too bulky and introducing more signatures is a way to have um, more information while still keeping a really sleek form. And then you're gonna go about another quarter down. So you end up with four holes. All right, three minutes, let's make it happen. <laughs> so then take out, um, we're gonna, again, we're just faking this. So now we have our two signatures with holes in the exact same place, which is what we want. Um, and so take your binder clips. Um, and I, do, I would do it at the top and bottom just to keep it really steady. And you're going to need your, your thread, which again, it's just two and a half. So one, two, this one's even a little over three. And get your needle. Oop, don't drop it. And we're gonna thread our needle. For the sake of speed, I'm going to use this really giant needle. <laughs> Which will be embarrassing if I can't thread as quickly as a small one, but we'll find out. All right. So now, on the outside of your book, you're going to go into one of the bottom stations and through the middle. So, then you're going to go, so you have your two books, your two signatures. You've gone into the, let's call this book A and this book B. So I've gone in to the signature in book A. And then you're gonna go out the second signature. So this just goes straight up. 
So we're going to go out this signature in A, or out this station, just the next one up, like you're climbing a ladder. And then we're going to go across into book B, into the same, the, into its little friend that's right across. So you have your line here, and you have this just coming out a hole here in book B. You're in book B. You're going to go out the next station in um, book B. So we have in book A, we had we went out the outside to the inside, we have a line. We crossed over on the outside into book B and created a line here with thread. Now we're gonna go back into book A the same way we did before. So we're starting to get these, this to be connected here. And you can just give it a gentle tug, nothing, nothing too tight, nothing to rip the paper, keep it taut. Now we're gonna go out the top signature in book A, or top station. So you have a line, skip a line um, in book A, and in book B, you only have the line in the middle. We're going to change that. So you're going to go, be going from book A back into book B from the outside spine. So now, now there's all of them are, almost all of them are connected. What I'm going to do now is going back down. Now we're in book B. We've gone through book A out and into book B. We're going to go into signature number or station number three, down one. So this does get, it, get, it doubles up in the sewing and makes your book stronger. So this is going to go, so now we've gone through and we're, create, we're connecting these lines and we're just tracing our way back down the way we came or the opposite way we came and creating the lines in place of where they were missing. So now we're in book A that didn't have this line and we're making it. So you can see now we've been connecting these lines by going back through. So this we've gone through, we went through the top signature or the top station here once. We've now gone through station three twice. We're about to go through station two a third, a second time. So going back through station two into, into B. And that's going to connect right here. So we still have, now let's just make, check, make sure everything's sort of taut in the way that you want it. Just get a little, these very gentle, gentle pulls. You don't want it, if you pull things too tight, the paper rips. So now we have in book A, we have lines all the way across. And in book B, um, we have one, two, and we're about to make our third line to bring it together. So now this is at the bottom. So we're coming through. And then, so now we've gone through, there's the entire inside on both signatures. This is, I'm going to undo my clips. And then this is just a simple thing. You just, what, you'll make sure that everything's taut the way you want it to, which I'm not going to do right now because I'm just teaching you. But then you just give it a little knot you can give it a double knot if you want. And there you have it. And so then just to quickly, where's some, 
And then what you can do is you can just quickly make a desk jacket and all that involves is having a larger piece of paper or you can have multiple pieces of paper, whatever, whatever you want. And it just is a matter of making a fold putting your book into it. And sometimes it depends, like if we're using card, or let's pretend I'm using card and I want to get something like this to go around. Um, I'll use the bone folder or my knife to score it. And then maybe I'll do another score next to it, ideally with a ruler, but we're fast and furious here. And then you bend, can, the bone folder makes it, re, or the knife makes it really easy to fold along that line so that then you get a nice edge spine. And then you just fold here at the bottom. And then I have my, have a bit of a, this isn't showing up very well because it's not hard, but you have your bit of a spine here and you have your end papers or your desk jacket. Um, and then you can come up with creative ways to align this in here. It can free float. There's a lot of possibilities. Um, so, so that's, and that's one way of attaching multiple signatures. Great. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much, uh, Aaron. Does anybody have any last minute questions before the end? Um, you can call them out or type them in the chat. I know we're a little bit over, but it was so great to be able to see joining two signatures together. Um, and if anybody's comfortable, I don't know if you have been following yeah, along and you want to share see your books. Your book, <laughs> you can turn on your camera just quickly and show us your book. That would be great um, if you want. And we'll close up just in a, in a couple minutes. Um, if anyone would just see if there's any other bits. I am. So, what were the names again of the different binding styles you've shown? Is there any way I can contact Aaron? I have questions afterwards. Yes, and yes, I'm going to put my email in right here, and you can contact me with any questions ever. I'm always happy for the rest of your lives to be your bookbinding consultant. Um, so I would say I'm going to type them out so that you also have them. So it's pamphlet stitch is the main stitch that we learned. And then we learned variations on it. So we learned three whole pamphlet stitch. We learned five whole st pamphlet stitch. And we learned um, two signature. I, sh I showed you how to make um, using four holes a a two signature pamphlet, though some people might say that that's not a two signature pamphlet. They can say that. I don't care about arguing with people who want to be really exclusive about anything. Um, <laughs> um, and then the book that had the two pamphlets in it facing different directions is a do si do book. This one is, and there's lots of tutorials for this online, and I'll scan and send to Kelly my favorite instructions for how to make this book. And so this is Japanese stab binding. Uh, and I'll just show quickly, someone may use Japanese stab binding to make a flip book, which I love. Sort of like, so there's lots of just different ways. And that was a way in which they had let the single page um, quality of it work for them. This person used old braille and like different materials, but also with a stab bind, also with a stab binding. Um, and where was it? I, there are many books here. And yeah, so this, and this would be another two pamphlet book. So those are some of the things we learned.